Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets. Breaking down a bite-sized piece, today we're going to continue on with our series of the essentials as far as cryptocurrency, where we're going to talk about what is a nano ledger and why do I need one, what's a public key, what is a private key, where are my coins and or crypto, how does a nano ledger work, how can I view my crypto balance on my phone, and how can I stake my crypto for passive income. Before we begin, I must start with the fact that some of you know a lot on the subject and some of you don't. So I'll be explaining everything in the most simplest level or terms as if you are starting from scratch, even though some of you are not. Also, if you feel that the Nano Ledger X or S is the right fit for you, check the description below for the link to the official website so you don't get scammed. Plus, the channel gets a referral bonus for everyone that signs up. So thank you very much. So let's start off. What is a Nano Ledger and why do I need it? So this is a Ledger Nano. Uh, in the box, we have a Ledger Nano X, which was just shipped to me. And we have the old school uh, Ledger Nano S. I've had this one for about three years. Works great, I haven't any problems with it so far. So uh, yeah, I do trust it. All right, so before we move on, let's talk about the Ledger Nano S and the X and how they differ. So first of all, these aren't really super expensive items. You'd think like, oh, what is it, like 300, 400, 500 bucks? No, it's uh, the S is only 59 bucks and the Ledger Nano X is $119. So just so you know, these aren't very pricey. So as we go through all this information, you can make your decision later. But just so you know, Ledger Nanos are a hardware wallet that's used to store your uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, others, all the different uh, cryptocurrencies you might have, and they're great for transactions. So here's how these two differ real quick. Uh, basically, pretty much the same thing, just that uh, the Nano X uh, has a little bit bigger screen and uh, it uh, has U uh, Bluetooth capabilities. Uh, it's got Ledger Live, which they both have. Uh, the specs are pretty much uh, as easy as this. The Nano S can hold uh, 3 to 20 apps, and I've got one of these, the Nan old one Nano S's, like we just talked about. And I can store about 3 to 6, so 20 apps, I think it's kind of pushing it. And then the Nano X, it says up to 100 apps. Uh, I don't think that's even uh, remotely possible, but uh, maybe. I can just tell you that uh, I can easily put on 20, I'm pretty sure. And then, uh, let's see, wallets are the same, security is the same, it's all the good stuff. And the hardware, it's just how you connect. Uh, one's got a micro B to connector, we're gonna talk about that, and one has a type C. Uh, no big deal, so that's essentially in a nutshell how the Ledger Nano S's and X's are differ, and there are the prices. So let's get into uh, the nitty gritty. So let's get down to it. Why do I need a Nano Ledger? And it really all comes down to hacks, ease of use, peace of mind. And if you can take a look here, we have hacks galore that have happened all the way throughout the history of cryptocurrency digital assets, beginning all the way back in 2011. We had, we had this little uh, exchange called Mt. Gox, which was only hacked for 30,000 back in July of 2011. And there's a bunch of cryptocurrency exchanges I've never heard of in my life. Bitcoin 7, Bitfloor, Inputs, Versarex, never heard of them, probably not around. And we can see that there's just a escalating amount of hacks going on, not too much, not too much. Then around 2014, three years later, Mt. Gox got hit with one of the biggest of all time where they lost $460 million with their cryptocurrency, much of that being Bitcoin. Now, if they would have had an Anna Ledger, maybe they wouldn't have suffered so bad, but who knows? Now we see Poloniex, Cryptocy, MintPal, and moving on to 2015 to 2018, we can just add up all these and we're looking at over a billion dollars in hacks quite easily. And this has actually continued all the way into 2019 where we had Cryptopia of 3.6 million, 100 million for CoinBean, BitThumb, 13 million, Binance, 40 million, BitTrue and Bitpoint at 32 million. So this seems to never want to stop. So how do we protect our cryptocurrency and digital assets? Well, we need wallets. And here are the four types. We've got online wallets, like for exchanges. We've got software wallets, like as the ones that you would download for your phone or even computer. We have paper wallets, and I guess this is pretty self-explanatory, just a paper wallet. And we have hardware wallets, like the Nano Ledger X and S. So let's break them down as to far as their advantages and disadvantages. 
Online wallets are mostly synonymous with exchanges like Coinbase and Binance. Uh, these let you access your crypto from any browser that's connected to the internet. When you leave your crypto assets on exchange though, you're actually using their online wallet, so just be aware of that. The biggest advantage of online wallets is that they're easily accessible from like any device that you could have with an internet connection. Because they are online, we call these wallets a hot wallet. However, their biggest advantage is also their biggest disadvantage as they become targets for hackers, which we just saw on these slides before this, where it was over a billion dollars plus. Also, you don't control the private keys because you're using their wallet. Now, we'll get to the concept of private keys and public keys in a second, but one point I want to make here is that I think people are used to leaving their currency somewhere else, like on exchanges, because of our old-fashioned bank mentality. Now, in the old days, we had to use a bank because we couldn't keep hundreds of thousands of dollars in a shoebox. That would be dangerous. People could just come in and rob us blind. However, with cryptocurrency digital assets, you are your own bank and you control your own bank vault. Now, I cannot stress this enough, so I'll be repeating it. Okay, software wallets. These are apps for managing cryptocurrencies that are installed on your computer or smartphone. The good news is that you do control your private keys with software wallets. Bad news is that since it's installed on your device, it's connected to the internet, which makes it a hot wallet also. So it exposes you to hackers. And I remember a story about a whale who left over a million dollars worth of crypto on his phone and he got hacked and lost it all. So the moral of the story is don't be that guy. Next up is the paper wallet, which is an offline mechanism for storing your private keys, which control your crypto assets. Now, as suggested by its name, the process simply involves printing the private key addresses and QR code on a paper sheet. As this wallet is not online or connected to the internet, we call it a cold wallet. Now, here's the problem. If your paper wallet gets lost or destroyed, you'll permanently lose access. Also, processing a transaction with a paper wallet can be a real pain. You'll need to manually enter your keys into a transaction tool, typically by using your computer's internet browser, which would expose the keys to hackers. Also, you still have to do what's called a paper wallet sweep into a software wallet first. So here's the directions from BitcoinPaperWallet.com. They're gonna they're gonna walk us through. So the whole criteria was, let's say you have a Bitcoin on a paper wallet and you wanna sell it on Coinbase. Here's how you do it. You gotta install and set up a trustworthy Bitcoin wallet on your phone using one of these types, bread or mycelium. Now you get to use a different device like your laptop, find your Coinbase receiving address, log into Coinbase, go to accounts, click on receive, and then it'll display your QR code. Now you open up your paper wallet to reveal the private key and QR code. Look, if you wanna go through all that, good luck, but uh, that is the whole criteria for a paper wallet. Now, a hardware wallet, like the Nano Ledger, is an offline storage option for private keys. Since it's offline, we call it a cold wallet also. With a hardware wallet, even if a hacker succeeds in getting control of your computer, he or she won't be able to steal your private keys and access your crypto assets. Your private key is kept offline and limits the risk of hacking. Also, even if someone physically steals your ledger, there is a passcode that they need to enter to access it. As a result, hardware wallets are widely considered to offer the most secure wallet option. Now, I personally have one for over three years now, haven't had a problem, and I trust it. Uh, with all of my crypto assets. So this is how I see and use each wallet. Online wallets, or the exchange wallet, I use uh, just as like an on and off ramp to buy and sell crypto. Now I leave some crypto on the exchange to start my bull run exit strategy. Now to see what I'm talking about, check out the bull run basics and the essentials playlist where I talk about that. Again, I only leave some crypto on the exchanges. I did not want to get hacked. Uh, next part, software wallets, like those on your phone, I see being used like a debit card. Now, I would keep a little bit here if I wanted to pay for something in crypto at a retail store, but I don't do this now, uh, but we'll probably do so in the future as crypto catches up, becomes more widely accepted. Again, I would not keep the bulk of my digital assets on this as it's prone to attacks and hackers. Now, as far as the paper wallet, I see this as for the person who really wants security, but really doesn't want to buy a ledger. If you want to deal with all the hassles, then be my guest. Now, the hardware wallet, like my Nano Ledger, I see as being pretty much like a bank vault where it's highly secure and where I keep the vast majority of my cryptocurrency asset wealth in because that is what a bank vault's for. I feel with this, I'm in control and pretty much I am my own bank, essentially. Now, before we move on, let's clear up what a public key and a private key actually is. 
So when you own cryptocurrencies, what you really own is a private key. Every cryptocurrency that you own has an associated public and private keys. Now the easiest way to understand them is to look at these paper wallets. Now notice here there is a Bitcoin address and there is a private key. So here's the difference. To receive Bitcoin or any crypto, you just need a public key, which is sometimes called an address or a public address. In this example, in this particular wallet, it's called a Bitcoin address. But it's all the same thing. Uh, the public key is what you'll share with anyone you want so they can pay you in crypto. And to show you that it's totally safe, here is my public address for Bitcoin. Go ahead, uh, write it down. Send me as much Bitcoin as you possibly want to. Uh, I just put this up here to show you that it's, it is extremely safe because it is a public address. Now, private keys are different. You do not share your private keys with anyone. Let me say that again. Keep your private keys private. Don't share it, and here's why. A private key is comparable to an actual key. This key unlocks the right for its owner to send or transfer the crypto out of their wallet. A private key also proves ownership of a crypto. Just ask Craig Wright. Once you send or receive Bitcoin, or any cryptocurrency for that matter, the transaction is recorded on the blockchain, which is a distributed ledger, to all the nodes, and there is a record of it. Now, if you want a simplified video of what blockchain, distributed ledger, nodes, smart contracts, and oracles are, or anything that didn't make sense in that last sentence, I'll put this video, and I'll link it at the end of this one, so you can continue on and uh, learn and find out some more information. Now, obviously, every cryptocurrency you own has its own public address and private keys. Everything from Ethereum to EOS to even Tomato Coin. I'm just kidding. Tomato Coin doesn't exist, but you get the whole idea here. So let's recap and simplify. You can share your public key with anyone you want because this is a one-way flow of currency into your account, but you never ever post or give away your private key because that is a one-way flow of currency out of your account. Owning crypto assets comes down to managing your private keys. Basically, you are your own bank and you control your keys to your own bank vault. So we answered what's a nano ledger and why do I need it? And we also answered what is a public key private key. Let's move on uh, to where the question asks, where are my coins? All right, so where is it? Your crypto is everywhere and it's nowhere. Your cryptocurrency coins do not physically exist on any wallet, on online, software, paper, or hardware wallet. Cryptocurrencies do not exist in a physical sense, period. The only thing these wallets store are your private keys. Now this concept, it's probably the hardest to understand for people new to crypto and digital assets. So I'll put this another way with a question I usually get. And that question is, can I hold physical cryptocurrency? If I can't see it, touch it, or feel it, then it doesn't exist to me, right? Well, here's the thing. First of all, there is no physical cryptocurrency. You can touch or hold in your hand like a dollar bill or a gold coin like these images and videos depict. These are just concepts. Cryptocurrencies do not physically exist. In our new world, we have everything digitized, and cryptocurrency lives inside data, blockchain, and nodes. Again, if this is new to you, I'll link this video at the end of this one so you can learn all about it. Think of it this way. Money that you think you have in your bank account is all on a digital ledger in your bank, meaning it doesn't exist there either. So it's all numbers just floating around. Your bank probably holds anywhere between $50,000 to $200,000 at any one time, depending on how big your bank is. So if you walked in right now and said, hey, I want to withdraw $200,000, they would tell you that you're going to have to wait a couple of days because they don't have it. And uh, even though your account might say that you have way more than that. So we answered, where are my coins and crypto? Let's get into how this nano ledger works by taking a little bit of Bitcoin off the Coinbase exchange, uh, which is the online wallet, and transfer it to this new nano ledger X. Okay, so here we have the Ledger Nano X and the old school Ledger Nano S. This is my original one, which I had for three years or so. Notice here that it's pretty small-ish. It's got these two manual buttons right at the very top. Great, so with this one, now we're gonna put it over here. Let's unbox this Ledger Nano X. Now this is the new one. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit uh, bulkier, but it does have Bluetooth capability and has a battery, and that's always nice, which is going to allow us to uh, take a look at our um, portfolio in our phone automatically. So let's open this sucker up. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so we got the Ledger Nano X. What else we got? Hello. All right. So 
we'll put this to the side. And then here's the thing I was looking for, which is our USB cord. Which this is a little bit fatter than my original one. Now for this one, for your Ledger Nano uh, S, the smaller one, it has a different type of input. It is a USB micro. Uh, for the Ledger Nano X, it is what we call a USB uh, C. So it's uh, this one goes right into here. And this is goes the USB uh, goes into our computer, and then we use the USB device itself and connect. And let's see. Oh, so let's go through this process together. Welcome to Ledger Nano X. Press the right button to continue. All right. Download Ledger Live at ledger.com forward slash start, then press right button. So I've actually already downloaded this to my computer, so we should be set and good to go. Now, again, uh, the official website is ledger.com. All right, click on that. Press left or right button to browse through menus and lists. Okay, left and right. Press both buttons to validate, just like the Nano Ledger S, but the buttons were up here. Now they're just right here. No big deal. Hold both buttons anytime to access the control center to power off and on, to power off and more. So just hold these down. Great. And start Ledger Live. You get assistance during setup. Great. So set up a new device. Restore from recovery phase. And reminder, both buttons to validate selection. Okay, so since this is a new, a brand new device, we need to set this up as a new device. Again, if somebody steals your ledger, you can, it's easy enough because they have to know your passcode. If they don't, it gets wiped out. You can just buy another one of these, enter in your passphrase, which we're going to get a new one in a second, and uh, just have it redone. It's pretty great. So let's set this up as a new device. So again, we're going to press both buttons. Bam. Let's choose a pin code of four to eight digits. All right. Sounds good. And both buttons. Whoops. So let's enter. And again, we can go four to eight. So let's just make this easy. One, both buttons, two, three, four, five. And then we want to stop right here. We can keep going or we can uh, delete, but uh, let's just check this off. So it's one, two, three, four, five. That's amazing. It's the same uh, passcode as my luggage. And let's confirm that. So one, both buttons. Doo -doo. Two, both buttons, up, three, both buttons, up, four, both buttons. And then it's going to have us check it off, but that's not correct because we had one more, five, and then check. So write down your recovery phrase. And this is the most important part because the recovery phrase is essentially your master key. We have the private key, the public key, and now we have our recovery phrase. Again, this is what we're going to use to restore the ledger if it ever gets lost or wiped away or destroyed or whatever else. So uh, let's see what they got. So uh, let's see, both buttons. Warning, these 24 words are your only backup. Secure them carefully. And I cannot uh, stress that enough. So let's go here. Word number one, couple. So again, well, not again, I didn't really explain this. So in your packet, there was this thing that said, hello. In the hello packet, they have these things called recovery sheets. And there's actually one, two, I believe there's three, three. So, oops, put that back in. See, what's great about this is this just got disconnected. And if I would have done that with my Nano Ledger S, it would have just shut off because there's no battery in that one. But uh, with this one, there is a battery and I think it lasts up to eight hours after fully charged. So that's always nice. So uh, yeah, so it's the first word we have is couple. So what we're gonna do, take our card, move these out of the way, and I'm gonna write down couple. What do we have for the next one? And I'm not gonna do all these because that would be super boring for everybody. Number two, render. D-E-R. And I'm just gonna go through all these. Three. Okay, so we're on our 24th word, and here they all are, I've written them all down. 
And I'm showing this to you uh, so you know exactly what to do. Now, uh, I will obviously wipe out this uh, Nano Ledger later, but uh, uh, just so you know, this is how, all how it all works. So we got our 24 words, what's next? And again, you can go back and forth uh, when doing your setup in case you missed something, uh, just to make sure you got it. So let's go forward for 24 words. Now, press left to verify your 24 words. Press both buttons to continue. So let's see, left, so yeah, we can verify all these. Yeah, we did that. Press both buttons and continue. Let's do that. Confirm your recovery phrase. Now, this is important because we want they wanna make sure we actually uh, actually wrote these down because a lot of people don't and if they don't I don't understand why they wouldn't but if they don't and something messes up then they can't get back into their ledger so nobody uh, is storing your recovery phrase nobody is storing your uh, pub or private keys so this is why it's all on you uh, because you are your own bank which is a lot different than what we're probably used to so let's confirm it and both so confirm word number one dove Mm, that's not right. Our word number one is couple. So what we need to do is just go back and forth until we find couple. And there it is. Confirm word number two, which is render. And again, I'm not gonna do all this because you guys are gonna be super bored. So let me just fast forward this. And processing. So here we are at the last part. We've entered all 24 words. And your device is ready. So in the old style, in the, when I did this, when I first set mine up three years ago, it would just have you verify like three or four words and it was random. You could, you could uh, say like, okay, what was word number three? What's word number 12? What's word number 18? This one makes you do all of it, uh, which is kind of a, it's a good thing. I think what would really help is if they put all the, uh, uh, words in alphabetical order. That way you're not just scrolling through 24 randomly. That would kind of help out just to speed things up, but uh, that's just one minor thing that I could suggest, and that's it. Let's keep going. Also, here's some best practices for your recovery phrase. Don't share a 24-word recovery phrase uh, with anybody you don't trust. Never enter your recovery phrase on any device other than your hardware wallet. There's been a bunch of scams out there where scammers will ask for the recovery phrase to be entered in different formats into different uh, websites, and it's not that's not what it's there for. It's for your hardware wallet only. Also, never take a picture of the 24-word recovery phrase with your phone or computer or anything connected to the internet because people can get into there and just hack it and take your recovery phrase and uh, steal your all your cryptocurrency. Now, I guess a Polaroid would be fine, but uh, that's for like old people like me who actually remember those things. And then uh, lastly, uh, I store my paper passphrase in a bank vault. Um, if I lose my ledger or something crazy happens where it gets destroyed, I know I can get that passphrase back and I can bring all my cryptocurrency back so it's like a peace of mind. So you can keep it on paper, but paper sometimes gets destroyed and lost. Just uh, my two cents. So, access dashboard. Device is ready. So we're going to, we can go back and forth, but we're gonna press two buttons to access the dashboard, bink. And here we are for install the app, control centers, and all that good stuff. So what we're gonna to need to do is go into Ledger Live. Okay, here we are on ledger.com. And uh, this is the official website. This is where we can download the Ledger Live app. Very simple, we click on downloads. Manage your go-to for managing crypto and just click on download. Then you just pick uh, what are you downloading it to? Are you downloading it to your Android phone or your uh, iPhone or is it actually going to be in your desktop? Now for, for me, I'm going to download it here first on my, um, my computer and then later on I'm going to uh, show you how to download it for your, um, your, your iPhone. So let's do that right now. So I'm going to click on Ledger Live app and it's a Mac app and this little guy comes down you can't really see all, the whole thing but it says ledger live desk desktop 2.0.1 dash mac.dmg i'm going to click on save and off it goes about 119 megabytes we'll uh, go for that and then we'll open it up so what we're going to do here is we're going to press both buttons and it tells us use manager ledger live to install the apps and more so let's jump into the computer and and uh, take a look at what ledger live looks like right now Okay, so here we are on Ledger Live. And you'll notice that it's a pretty basic uh, look or layout. But uh, on, the, on the first tab here, we've got our 
portfolio, which will tell you everything that you have once you uh, have it all in there. Now, I personally am on the discrete mode, so you know I want to show you everything. Uh, but this is, uh, yeah, essentially the the whole layout. So Ledger Live here uh, for portfolio, your accounts. These are all the different various accounts you have had or have ever had. And like I told you before, I mean, I used to have a lot of different uh, tokens. I had like over 50, and here's just some of them. Man, it's a lot. Anyhow, and if we want to send any cryptocurrency or receive it, we're going to use these, and we're going to use this one pretty quickly, actually, because we're going to transfer uh, Tezos from our Coinbase account into our Ledger Live, and I'm going to show you how to stake all that. And then uh, last two things are Manager, uh, where, where we can download apps into our Led into our Nano Ledger uh, X, and then Buy Crypto. So under Buy Crypto, real quick, these are all the different services that Ledger... Uh, recommends. I personally don't use any of them, but uh, I've heard good things on Crypto.com and Shapeshift and uh, Changely. I've heard some things, but I, I don't use them, so use them uh, at your discretion. So let's first go to Manager. Manager, this is where we're able to actually download the apps for our Nano Ledger. Now the thing is, is that these apps, so each different cryptocurrency has its own app. So Bitcoin has an app, Ethereum has an app, uh, XRP has its own app. So everything has its own app. So we have to first install that app onto our Ledger uh, Nano X. So here we have our, our Ledger Nano X. And what we're gonna do is we're going to plug this sucker in to our USB port and it's on. So we're gonna obviously put in our pin code, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then that's it. So, th so it's going to take a little bit, it's going to load, and here we are. So we have our Ledger Nano X up, and these are all the different apps we can download into our Nano X. Now my old one, the Nano S, didn't have room for more than three, sometimes five, but uh, the X has room for like, I think 10 or even maybe 20, I'm not for sure. We're gonna take a look in a bit, but uh, since this is new, I'm going to just use what I need to use, which is Tezos. Let's take a look. It's like uh, T-E-Z-O and install. So as you, as you can see on my, uh, my Nano here, it's just processing as it starts to install. And boom, there it is, Tezos Wallet. And it says yes. So you know what? Let's just uh, do a couple more. Why not? Let's do Bitcoin. B-I-T-C-O-I-N. Oh, it's right there in the front. Okay, so now that we have um, we have Tezos and Bitcoin on our Nano, what we need to do is we need to put Tezos into our account on Ledger Live. So let's take a search. And T E Z. O S no accounts found. So let's add the account. Tezos. And what's it what this is doing is this is adding Tezos to our uh, ledger live. We already have Tezos in our nano ledger, the actual device. Now we need to put it on the app, which is in our computer. So let's see. Open the Tezos wallet. Sure. Double click. Application is ready. And it is synchronizing. Add new account, Tezos1, we're gonna name this Tezos1 and then, uh, whoops, X. N-A-N-O, Nano X. And let's add the account. Account successfully added, great. So and this would be the same thing if you wanna add Bitcoin or Ethereum or anything else, you would just go here. So remember, let me close this real quick. So in the manager is where you add apps to your Nano Ledger hardware wallet. And in the accounts is where you add the different apps to your Ledger Live. Okay, easy enough. So now let's receive, and there it is, let some Tezos from Coinbase to our nice little Nano. So yeah, that's the one. And continue. And what we want to do is you can either double click here and press Command C or Control C to copy, or this little button right here will also copy, address copied. And we're gonna verify it. Uh, <clears throat> I always use the first the first three or four and the last three or four, so TZ1D, uh, 5QD, sure enough. Double click. Reject, accept. All right, 
So we've got our Tezos wallet, our public address to receive. Let's go into Coinbase. Okay, so here we are in Coinbase and I've already logged in and clicked on uh, Tezos to send it. We're gonna send XTZ. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our Tezos address like so. And then one thing I was worried about uh, as far as addresses was um, making sure it was the correct one. Cause I would always think, what if I didn't put in the correct address? So if I missed the letter or misspelled or whatever else, I didn't copy it right, it wouldn't come up correctly. See how I uh, got rid of the D? It'll, there, that little green check mark will go away and you can't send anything. So uh, that's just something to be aware of. Let's take, uh, let's send over, let's take $2 or so. And let's send over one Tezos and note, and this is this is just for your records. This is two nano X, and let's play quick continue. Two step verification. So let me check the Google Authenticator. And off it goes. So that is on its way. So let's check over in Ledger Live, see if it's there. Okay, so let's check back and see if we actually got our Tezos. And we'll go to our uh, accounts. Let me expand this so everybody can see this. So we got our accounts. And let's search for Tezos. And it looks like we got $2 worth of Tezos or 1.00 whatnot. And that is essentially how we do everything with uh, receiving uh, cryptocurrency. Now, I want to explain something about the, the nano ledgers. First of all, you cannot extract the private keys from your nano. Security of your, your private keys is the, the primary reason why you own this hardware wallet in the first place. You just got to know one thing, that you own your private keys that are second are secured in your nano. You also have the recovery phrase, sometimes called the seed phrase, which is the master key for all of your crypto. So when, when you first get this and you're getting used to your hardware wallet, I want you to put a small amount of crypto like we just did. It could be Tezos or Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever you want to do. And then I want you to wipe it out and restore from the recovery phrase or the seed phrase, whatever you want to call it. And I think it's best just to show you exactly how easy that is to do. And I need you to get used to it so you don't feel nervous about losing your wallet or misplacing it or having some kind of fear because it, it's irrational. You can just back up everything. So let's do that right now. All right, so let's do this. So let's wipe out our nano. So the easy way to do it is just uh, mess up your pin code three times. So let's, uh, yeah, 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 something like that. And then, sure. Invalid pin, two attempts left. All right, sure. Let's try this again. Invalid pin, device reset. So this is where it's going to reset everything and we have to uh, actually, it's going to reset itself to the manufacturer uh, originality. So we have to restore the device from your recovery sheet. Restart device. We'll just restore it. So essentially, what's going to happen is if somebody steals your, your nano ledger, uh, they're not going to know your passcode. So when they try to hack into it, they can't because they don't have the code. And when they mess up three times, it's going to be wiped away. So what are they going to do with it? They'll probably just throw it away. Now, what you can do is just, uh, you know, order one if you need it and um, uh, just back it up with your recovery phrase also. Uh, or if, if you even messed this up yourself, of course, you can do the same thing we're going to do right now. So let's uh, take our recovery phrase and back this up or restore it. First, let's, uh, I guess we have to restart the device. All right. And it's the same type of thing. Da, 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 da. Set up as a new device? No, we want to restore from the recovery phrase, both buttons. So let's choose a pin code of four day digits. Sure. Let's do the same one. Five. And then boom, off we go. So confirm pin, same thing. Enter your recovery phrase. So this is going to be kind of long, like last time, so I'm just going to speed this up. All right, processing. Device is ready. So let's take a look and make sure that everything is back to where it should be. It's 
access the dashboard. And of course, since it's wiped out, all of the applications are wiped out, Tezos and Bitcoin application, but we can easily put those back on. The main thing is, where is our crypto? And it should be in our, let's take a look in Ledger Live. Okay, we're back in Ledger Live, and I want you to notice something, and that is that uh, the amount uh, did not change. Now, the price did change of one pesos, approximately one pesos. Uh, it went from $2 to $1.97 because as the time has been fluctuating between making this video, the actual price uh, of one pesos has decreased by $0.03. Cents. So just so you know, Ledger Live will self-update with the current price and show you how much uh, you have as far as what's in your portfolio and how much your portfolio is worth. But the one big thing is that nothing has changed. Your cryptocurrency is still safe. And that leads me to my next point. Your cryptocurrency and digital assets, they never leave anywhere. It doesn't matter what happens to your Ledger Nano. Your cryptocurrency lives on the blockchain. It is not a physical uh, representation of anything. You can't hold it or touch it. It is everywhere and it is nowhere. So uh, that is just one of those things. The only thing that we need this Ledger Nano wallet for, because if, if a wallet doesn't hold physical money like our regular wallet does, then what's the point of the Nano Ledger? Well, there's two things. One is to be able to send uh, cryptocurrency, and the other one is to be able to receive. Now, to receive is easy, right? We, we talked about that. There is a public address, you know, give us Bitcoin all day long, right? But to send, that is where you need to have your Ledger Nano backed up because to send this Tezos back to Coinbase, we're going to need to uh, verify the transaction and click on some buttons on the Nano, which we're going to go over in a little bit. Uh, but if we don't have an actual working Nano Ledger that is um, queued or synchronized to this account, all of this cryptocurrency cannot be transferred to any other uh, exchange to any other person you can't cash out so that is why we need this nano ledger so let's send one tezos uh, back to coinbase so i can show you exactly what i'm talking about so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to coinbase which we've already logged in gone to tezos and clicked on the receive button go through the uh disclaimer i understand i understand and here's our wallet address and very simply we can scan it with a qr code but the key, easiest way of course is just to copy it so i can uh, click on everything press command c or control c or this button right here on the right and it'll be copied now we're going to take this and put it into the address in ledger live Okay, here we are back in Ledger Live, and we want to ship over one Tezos. Uh, to, so right now it's worth $1.97. Uh, we can click on this button here. It'll tell us 1.00. doesn't matter. So we're going to try to uh, switch, uh, send over about a, one Tezos to Coinbase. Let's see if we have enough as far as like the transaction fees. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to send it. This is our Nano Wallet. And the address is the one that we just copied from Coinbase, because that's where we're going to send it to. And let's paste it in there. Let's continue. And let's try to send one Tezos, see if we have enough. Network fees are 0.03. No, not enough. So let's just try 0.95 Tezos. All right. So that's where the dollar five. Great. Let's just press continue there. And let's make it make sure this is where we're this is from our Nano Ledger X wallet. This is going to the Coinbase address, which is right there. Looks right. Let's press continue. Now everything goes through the device. So let's take a look here. Let's open up our device. One, two, three, four, five. Great. So let's see, open Tezos wallet. Let's do that. So let's confirm the source TZ1DKPLXVK. Let's see, let's confirm the transaction here on the uh, uh, Nano. The amount is 0 0.95, it looks right. The fee is 0 0.03. The source, again, TZ1DK, go through all that, and then 5QD is the last part looks right. The destination, this is from the Coinbase. That's where it's going to go to. Let's take a look. TZ1C65, 79V84, V5. Looks correct. All right. 
Storage limit, sure. Reject, no, we want to accept that. Let's accept it. Broadcasting transaction. And transaction sent, and that is all there is to it. So you see that without this nano ledger, without us being able to verify that, we cannot send anything. We can't send any cryptocurrency and digital assets. It will just stay forever in this section of the blockchain, essentially. So it's important that as time goes on, you are going to want to cash out or maybe pay somebody in dollars. So you're going to need to have a functioning wallet uh, to send your, your cryptocurrency all over the place. So that is exactly how we uh, send and receive cryptocurrency. Okay, one more thing. I would like to talk about how to stake your Tezos so you can get passive income. There is to stake your Tezos, it's about six. It's around six percent annual yield. So uh, this is a pretty good deal. Now on Coinbase, if you stake it over there, it's around five percent. But if you do it through the Nano Ledger, it's around six. So why don't you just do it on the Nano Ledger since you have everything there anyhow? So while we were gone in between the intermission there, I transferred over uh, around five Tezos so we could stake. So uh, it's pretty easy. Um, the same. Uh, section that we were at before under the accounts uh, right underneath there it just says earn rewards delegations we're gonna click on that and then you can see how delegation works you want to learn more about it but I'm gonna make it super simple just click on the delegate to earn rewards and then it's actually going to pick one for you as far as a validator goes uh, so you can stake it with them however if you want to cl click on the select button here you can choose other ones like Tezos vote has 6.09 uh, Coinhouse has 5.97, Money Every Three Days 6.2, and 5. Point, and it just depends on uh, which validators there are. So uh, let's say I like Table Vote 6.09. Why not? And first of all, it's going to see the network fees 0 0.008 to send over. Great. Let's continue, and let's confirm. And again, to confirm delegation, we're going to have to go through our Nano Ledger X. So let's see here. Confirm delegation. Sure. Fee 0 0.008204, that's what we saw. The source, TZ1DK and QD. TC1DK, QD for the source, that's correct. To delegate, TZ1BH, TZ1BH, last uh, IVCA, IVCA, that looks correct too. Uh, delegate name, Tezos Vote. Delegate name, validator, Tezos Vote, correct. Storage limit, sure, reject or accept, let's accept. I'm casting the transaction and that's all there is to it so you should earn your first reward within about 40 days depending on the validator so again this is 6.09 percent annual yield uh, so if you have a ton of tezos uh, pretty good deal it's a lot better than you can get going to get into a checking account i can tell you that right now so that is the simple process of staking your tezos okay let's talk about how to uh, download ledger live for your uh, Android device or uh, iPhone. So first thing you always want to go to ledger.com. Uh, always go to the official website because you don't know what you're downloading from other places. Even though you know the Google Play Store might seem safe or uh, the App Store for iPhone, uh, sometimes you never know. And there's been different uh, instances where people have been hacked because they've downloaded the wrong thing. So always go through the official website. So first we're going to do is let's take a look for downloads and go to crypto download. And it's going to say right here, download the App Store, get it on Google Play. And we can just click on there. That'll take us to the direct download of the official uh, app. I've already downloaded it, so I'm just going to open mine up. And let's get started. So we use a Magic Crypto. Great. So what do we got for this one? We have a Nano X. Let's import desktop accounts. Now there's four different options here. Initialize as new device, no. Restore from recovery phrase, no, where I did that. Use initialized device, that would be a good one. Let's try that. Did you choose your pin yourself? Yes. Did you save records? Yes, I did. Continue. So let's pair the Legend Nano X, so we're gonna add a new one. So how do we do that? Looking for devices, ah, there it is. Great thing is if you have your USB um, setting already on, it'll automatically find it, which is pretty cool. Let's take that and let's pair. NanoX would like to pair with your phone from the pair pair. And we're going to do a genuine check. It says, don't please turn off your Nano X and allow management. And then we're going to take a look at our Nano Ledger and it's going to say, allow Ledger. Yes. Pair successful. Fantastic. We'll press continue. 
Set a password or prevent authorized access to Ledger Live on your phone. Sure, let's set a password. And let's do one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Confirm. Yeah, sure. Got it. So if you want to do if you if you want to sign up for that, you can analyze some bug reports for all that stuff. I'm going to opt out. Your device is ready. Open Ledger Live. So let's do that right now. And here's the terms of service, which uh, nobody reads. So we'll just say we did. So here we're going to have to also add accounts. Let's just import the desktop accounts. Sure. In Ledger Live Desktop, go to Settings, Accounts, Export Accounts. Sure. Settings, I guess it will be this one. Accounts, right there. And Export Accounts. Let's export. And there's a nice little QR code. Let's scan it. Right, look at all this stuff. Wow, Bitcoin, XRP, Ethereum, Dogecoin, Doze, whatever. And import desktop, let's X import. So now we'll take a look at the portfolio and everything's matched up. So you can see everything on the fly as to what your uh, portfolio is doing on a day-by-day -day basis without going to your computer. Now that's what something that you're interested in, fantastic. For me, I'd rather just look at it uh, every so often so I don't go crazy. But that is essentially how to uh, set up your uh, Nano Ledger live on your phone. Okay, so that is it. That takes care of how does the Nano Ledger work? How can I view balances on my phone? And how can I stake my crypto for passive income? So I want to say thanks for sticking with me through the whole thing. It was, I know it was a lot of information, but it was pretty important. If the Nano Ledger X or S is something that you're interested in, just click on the link below in the description and it'll take you to the official website. And also, if you use the uh, affiliate link, then part of that affiliate uh, uh, proceeds goes to the channel. So we want to say thank you very much. Also, uh, as promised, I'm going to put the other two videos to help uh, increase your knowledge as far as blockchain goes and as far as like a, for a bull run scenario so I'm gonna link on the left hand side I'm gonna put uh, what is blockchain uh, what is uh, Bitcoin what is a smart contract what are oracles and on the right side I'm gonna put what's called the bull run basics so you don't get caught short uh, when the bull run or the parabolic bull run eventually does happen so I'll link that at the very end it's gonna be right there in the left and right and that is it so thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one